up? Welcome back. Uh, happy Saturday. So, first things first, my apologies for pretty much no videos last week. I have been having a lot of migraines and last week was just like, it was a wash, like, so that wasn't going to happen. So my apologies for so that. So I used to run a blog for about five years, and I literally used to get every single holiday set. And then in the last two years, I was just like, you know what? I don't think so. Um, you guys probably saw my little rant last week, which is the only video that I got up last week. What I started doing was I started doing like an anti-holiday sets type deal where I would find smaller brands that were doing more innovative things for the holidays um, and I would purchase those. I would still get a few of the big holiday items, stuff that kind of appealed to me, um, but I wouldn't get everything the way that I used to do. And then most of the money that I would use to spend on the holiday sets from like Too Faced and Tarte and stuff like that, I would use it to explore brands that I haven't, that I've been interested in but never really explored. But, okay. So we're starting off my recent tradition with a brand that I have been um, pretty interested in for a very long time, and that is Laura Geller, New York. So <clears throat> I don't know a lot about the brand. I do know that I've always seen their stuff because I shop on QVC too, so I see their stuff on QVC all the time. Um, look, wherever there's makeup, I will find it. I, yep, I sure will. So I shop on QVC and I see the stuff on QVC. It's in Ulta, so I see it in Ulta all the time, and it's really pretty stuff. My only issue with the brand was that everything was baked, and I don't particularly care for baked products. Um, I... I find baked products to be a little bit too much for me. They're like usually quite shiny and I'm just like, uh, why? So I don't really like baked products, but over the last year, they've been coming out more with um, less baked focus products and just like, you know, regular stuff, like whatever. And so I went onto the website. Well, I saw it in Ulta and I was going to get it and I couldn't figure out what my shade was. So I went to the website and I got a 20% off coupon um, for, you know, like first time signing up or whatever. And so I decided to go ahead and get it from the website. And it was a good thing that I did that because the website has a pretty handy matching tool. And so I picked up three items. I picked up the Filter First Luminous Foundation in the color Cognac. And I pray to God that this is the right color because I'm looking at the bottle and it does not look like the right color even though I was matched by the website. And then I also picked up the Filter First, uh, what is it? The Filter First Luminous Concealer in the shade Deep Tan, which was matched to the foundation, so I just picked both of them up together. I also picked up the, um, the Southampton Face Palette, which was the reason why I was interested in the brand in any case, because I saw it in Ulta this summer and I almost picked it up, but it did not come in my stuff. So, yeah. All right, so we're not going to cry over spilled palettes. We, we don't have the palette. We just don't have the palette, which is kind of a shame because I kind of wanted to do a whole face thing. But the foundation was the reason I went to the website, so that's fine. If I get the palette, I guess I'll come back and see what it looks like. Um... So I got the Filter First Luminous Foundation. Um, it comes in only 12 shades, unfortunately. Um, it is $38 for one fluid ounce. And that's what we're going to test today. I, I'm not going to work. It's Saturday, so you guys know I don't work on Saturday, but I'm not going to work. And um, But I'm probably, I'm going to do a little bit of a wear test. It is now... 2.24 p.m. so I'm probably going to do a little bit of a wear test and then um, I'll come back here later and show you what it looks like. So like I said I got the shade Cognac which looks like this. I'm not sure you know it is the correct color but we're going to try it anyway. I'm just going to use a buffing brush today. I don't feel like using a beauty blender or whatever. The brush is right here. I don't feel like getting up so um, this is what Cognac looks like. Oh, it might be the right color. All right, so before we start slapping this stuff on our face, let's read a little bit what it says. It says, Blurs Imperfections. Finely crushed pearls diffuse light for flawless looking skin. 
Versatile coverage easily builds from medium to full coverage, helps promote healthier looking skin, antioxidant rich ingredients. It is vegan, gluten free, and paraben free. And yeah, that's about it. So once again, this is the shade Cognac, which yay, I might have done a good job for once. Um, we're just going to go in and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is my face with one layer. Um, I don't know if you guys would call this light or medium coverage. Um, I think it's light medium coverage, uh, but you can see it is a very, very good match. Let me read what 12 is supposed to be. Wait, no. I'm a liar. Um, so Cognac is the fourth to last shade. Okay, so if we're using numbers, Cognac would be uh, number nine. And on the Ulta website, it says it is a medium dark with a warm golden undertone. I think the undertones are a little bit more warm than golden, but I don't care because that's what my face looks like and I really like it. So this is kind of um, a medium finish, I suppose. Well, no, not yet. This is kind of a light finish, kind of a light close to medium finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to finish the rest of my face and then we're going to come back and try the concealer and see how that bad boy works. Alright guys, so yeah. I'm an idiot. So I wound up actually um, putting on the concealer thinking that I was talking to you guys and I camera was still paused. So here's the concealer. Um, this is uh, dark, dark tan. This is deep tan. Um, what I said was the formula is very thin. Um, the sponge on the top of it is actually a, de a detriment to the formula because I can't apply it that much and it's going on very patchily. So um, it's a very luminous form formula. It's a very thin formula and the sponge is just shearing it out more. So um, I don't like this sponge very much. I, I don't know if I like the formula of the concealer as yet. I will know when I sit here for a little bit, let it dry down and go in with a second coat. But as of right now, I don't care for this This sponge. is what we have with one layer of the concealer. And as you can see, there's like almost no coverage. Um, so I'm just going to go back in with another layer and hope that, you know, it works this time. As for the color, um, it's not going to be a brightening concealer because it's almost the same color as my skin tone and the foundation, so it's definitely, definitely not going to be brightening. So you know how I always say, I don't know why I say definitely, definitely. I was watching someone's video the other day about New York slang, and it turns out that when New Yorkers want to put emphasis on something, they double a word. I didn't even realize that. I do it all the time, um, but I didn't even realize that. So that's why I say definitely, definitely. That's so weird. That's so weird. All right, guys, here we are. The final look. Um, so how do I feel about these products? Um, like I said, I'm going to do a wear test anyway. It's, yo, it's taken me an hour to do all this. Yo. All right, so it is 323. We started at 224. So it is now 323. Um, how do I feel about this product? I really like this foundation so far. Um, the color was spot on. I am really surprised that the website was so accurate with the color um, match. The concealer. I think that this concealer 
has the potential to be a great concealer, but the sponge tip apulate, ap 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 what the hell? Wow. Okay, so the sponge tip apulate, The sponge tip applicator, thank you, the sponge tip applicator kind of ruins it for me because of how thin the formula already is. Even going in with two coats underneath my eye, there was still a lot of darkness right here, which is where I usually have to go back in multiple times with concealer because it's very dark right there. Um, even with two coats and brightening powder, it is not all that bright. So, um... I might rip the sponge off if I use this concealer again and just use it by itself because um, I'm not mad at it. I kind of like it. The foundation, oh my god, the finish is absolutely beautiful. Um, it is a matte finish. It is, I haven't even powdered. There's no powder on my face whatsoever. It is a luminous matte and those are so rare and hard to find. So this one is really nice. Um, for my first Laura Mercier product, I'm actually kind of shook. Um, but yeah, this is the final look. It is 323. I have a couple of other videos to make today and I also have to eat and stuff. So I will be back here later on with my final thoughts on the foundation, see how it held up and all that jazz. Um, I don't anticipate doing a whole lot of stuff, but that's always when I wind up doing it. So we don't know how this day is going to go. Yeah. All right, guys, I will see you back here a little bit later on. All right, Bye. guys, I am back with the results of my wear test. It is now 9.50 p.m. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what we're working with here, shall we? Um, if you guys remember, I did not powder my face at all. I didn't do it when I came on camera, and then I forgot to do it afterwards. So I've been running around out here for, what, about six and a half hours a little bit over six and a half hours. Y'all know I can't count. Um, with an unpowdered face, and this is what we have. I am a little bit oily here in my my U zone. I just found out the other day that it's called a U zone. Oh my word! So now I have a name for it. I'm a little bit oily here in my U zone, which is normal. Um, of course, the foundation is gone for my nose. Hmm. Big surprise there. Um, I've had a little bit of shifting right here and right here um some shifting here as well so and then here and here i think these are like the places that i was putting my hands on my face though so i think i might have lifted the foundation so if you were wondering if it were transfer resistant i guess that kind of answers your question it's not um yeah most of the places that it's lifted are on the places where I was because I was watching TV and I tend to do this and you know like this so um, my fingers lifted it off of my face but in all the places that I did not touch it is still fine um, so I would say yeah so I would say if you want if you like the finish of this foundation, and I actually really do like the finish of this foundation, if you like the finish of this foundation um, and you want to wear it, then you should probably powder it just to make sure that you set it or use a setting spray if you don't want to lose the luminosity of the foundation because it is luminous, but it's not like, oh my God, luminous. So if you powder it, you might lose a little bit of the luminosity. And I think that's why I didn't powder it either that I just didn't remember, which is probably the more likely scenario. Um, but yeah, if you want to keep the luminosity of the, the, the uh, foundation, I would suggest using a setting spray rather than powdering it. But I have to say for my first Laura Geller, and I said Laura Mercier in the beginning of the, um, in the beginning of the video because I'm used to Laura Mercier products. So my apologies for that. But this being my first Laura Geller uh, product, I am... I am impressed. I really do like this foundation a lot. I am actually really impressed with the shade match on the website. That's something, because even usually even when you when a website matches me, it's never really spot on and, and perfect. It's usually a little bit too dark or a little bit too light or the undertone is wrong. So I'm, I'm really surprised that this color match was such a good color match. The only thing that, the only thing that probably... I would change with this foundation is like more shades being available yeah my shade is like the fourth to last shade which 
you know, in a lot of mainstream brands, that's kind of rare. Like, you don't get any pass for just having 12 colors, but for my shade being not the second to last, like it usually is, that's kind of a big deal. But it would be nice to see more shades in this range um, because it's a really nice foundation. powdering um, of the under eye concealer seems to have stopped it from creeping up into places. And other than the very thin consistency of the foundation, um, foundation, other than the very thin consistency of the concealer, um, I don't really have too much of an issue with the concealer itself. Like I said, if I do continue to use it, I am more than likely going to rip that sponge off and probably use a brush to apply it because I don't like the way that sponge soaks up um, product. It is a good concealer if you don't have very dark circles that you need to mask. If you're like me and these industrial strength um, dark circles plague your Laura life. Geller um, Fill the First Foundation is a go. We like it. Um, we're going to continue using it because it's beautiful. It has a beautiful finish. The color match is on point. And yeah, it's just an all-around go. So thank you guys for joining me once again for yet another freaking foundation review because, like, clearly I'm obsessed with foundation. So we're just going to keep the ball rolling on that. But it's been great, man. It's been kind of right, awesome. So thanks for joining me once again, as usual. It's been real. It's been fun. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.